Thank you to Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, um, sorry for the ruckus, but um, I wanted to do a video where I'm gonna attempt to paint food. So let's see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna be using the randomizer and my usual list of Genshin characters to do this because I would like to draw a Genshin character kind of like showing off their specialty food just because I want to do something food related today. Um, but I'm gonna do this first. So I'm gonna press this basically four times and then on the fourth time it'll be the character that I'm gonna be drawing. And the reason is because every time I use the random generator, it picks like lower numbers. So if it's, let's say if I won the 50, it pretty much will always pick between like 40 to 50. So I'm just gonna let this kind of like reset itself by clearing it. So I'm gonna press it once, twice, three times. Okay, so now the next one I'm gonna pick is gonna be the character. So 37, that's still quite low though. Hopefully it's someone I haven't drawn that often. Yui Mia. Oh, that would be really cute actually. So I'm gonna draw Yui Mia and I'm gonna look up her special dish and we can go ahead and get started with the drawing. Okay, Yui Mia's dish is actually super cute. So hers is actually from the tricolor Donko. So I don't have Yui Mia and my brother doesn't have Yui Mia. So I actually didn't remember what her special dish was. And it's the summer festival fish and it looks super cute. I actually think this is gonna be super fun to draw. I'm actually gonna readjust the position of my camera because I'm at a weird angle at the moment and my keyboard is like unusually close today. So I'm gonna get reset up and we will get started with drawing kind of like her showing off her specialty dish, which I think will be really cute. I'm thinking of doing more of a waist up this time instead of just a headshot, but uh, I need to rack my brain on a pose. Cause I honestly, whoa, I could, like, do I want to do something more like action pose? Because I could do something cute like this. If I can describe how I'm, I want to do this. We could do her in casual clothes that I think her dish fits the theme. Yeah, look at the special tea dish again. So it's supposed to be tri like the tricolor Dongo. My friend actually has a cat named Dongo and it's really cute. He's really cute. <laughs> We're gonna have to figure out the, the logistics. I don't know the logistics, the positioning of the hand a little bit. So I don't wanna be too similar to the one I've drawn before. Oh, let's put this in my Genshin folder. Where is Yui Mia? Oh, she's right here. Yeah. I'm just thinking, do I want to render this any different? Or just do the normal way? I still haven't done the video where I wanted to show you guys how I do line art and procreate. Maybe, I don't know if I'm going to make her look like she's eating it. Or do I want it to look like she's just, she has one and she's offering one to you? I've been listening to B2B. <laughs> Again, I've been watching clips of their fan meeting. And I forgot how much I loved the song Dreamer. I was low-key hoping it would be Kaya or like, I think it's Kaya. I don't remember if Diona. Oh my God, I really want to call her Diano. <laughs> Diona, her dish. Cause I was hoping for something like a skewerish looking shape, but this works perfectly. I just need a bigger reference of her so I can see the details. I'm just gonna look at her. I'm gonna open actually up Game Fashion Archive so I can see her full outfit. I wanna do chores right now, but I can't. There's people around. I think this is supposed to be a bit shorter. Let me try to get this hair shape to look like Yui Mi a little bit more. I guess the Shogun would have been a good choice to draw someone with sweets. Flower. And then this attaches to like the... Is this like, it looks like one of those water balloon. 
This does not look right. Maybe I'll make the things a little higher. Put in little fishy tails. Before we continue with drawing Yoimiya, I wanted to let you guys know about Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. So Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are both Japanese snack subscription boxes. Tokyo Treat is the heaviest Japanese snack box with 15 to 20 full-size Japanese snacks, including a Japan exclusive drink, an instant ramen, exclusive seasonal Kit Kats, and much more. It comes with a 24 page cultural guide and booklet that includes information of each of their snacks in the box, as well as some cultural um, information about Japan and information on allergies and if the snack is vegetarian friendly. If you order this month's box, you will receive the Sweet and Snack Valentine's box. Um, while Sakura Co, on the other hand, is a authentic Japanese snack box with new seasonal Japanese treats every month. So this box includes Japanese tea, cakes, seasonal Japanese treats, and even Japanese home goods like ceramics or chopsticks. So in this box, I was actually really surprised because I wasn't expecting a little ceramic dish to come in the box and this one's super pretty i believe there's several other designs in the box but this is the one that i got and it's super cute and it's perfect for all these little small little snacks that you can just eat it's perfect for side dishes and stuff so that's really great so uh personally i've always missed eating like japanese snacks so when i went to japan in 2019 with my older brother and two of my closest friends one thing i definitely regretted was that i didn't try a big variety of different snacks. Um, we were always out and about, but never stopped to actually take a look at Japanese snacks, pick up a few for like friends and family at home. We only brought like a small selection, but this kind of fills the void for me, um, being able to try some familiar snacks as well as many new snacks that I've never even seen or heard of before, but finding a lot of new favorites. I decided to share the boxes with my older brother and I asked if he could share some of his favorite, basically list our recommendations. So my favorite was the umai choco bites from the Tokyo Treat box as well as the strawberry milk but I also like the little turtle crackers. While my brother's favorite was the Mike popcorn with the shrimp salt and his second favorite I believe was also the umai choco bites and both of us really enjoyed the milk. We did sh like split it in half and we did try the somen as well which is really great. So for the Sakura Co box I really like the heart shape strawberry chocolates. I think they are Arare crackers coated in a nice strawberry chocolate, which tastes really great. It's kind of like sweet and savory. And I believe that's also my brother's favorite. So we both recommend this one for sure. The second favorite for me was the Kocha. I love, 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 love tea. I love preparing tea. I love drinking tea. It's just, it always makes me feel cozy. And I just love the taste of black teas, herbal tea, white teas. I, I just love teas. And then for my brother, he liked the I think it's shrimp and mayo crackers. My brother is a fan of like a lot of savory snacks, but a lot of the Japanese sweets suits both of um, my palate and my brother's palate as we don't like overly sweet food. So it's not really every day that you can kind of get to try these kinds of Japanese snacks and being informed about their culture or like little different areas where these companies are kind of from. So be sure to check out Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. If you'd like to get a box for yourself, family or friends, do so by using the links in the description with the codes at checkout to receive free extra snacks along with your first Tokyo Treat or Sakura Co. order today. Thank you so much to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Okay, I'm back after like taking a break for like two days, so we're gonna resume. I think I said previously that I wanted to either do line art for this. So let's just sketch this out and get on a, like get a move on to this. I like a few things come up. Um, which is why I had to take like a small break on this illustration. <laughs> but hope we can just get back into the swing of things really quickly. Trying to make things look correct um, enough. Now that I know that I don't have to flesh this out too much, just enough so I can give myself context. Probably gonna stay up like past 2 a.m. so I can also do some Genshin bosses. So if I feel like I'm doing line work, sometimes I get super lazy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lower the opacity. I'm not going to duplicate this one because if I am going to do line art, so I'm going to do line art in kind of a different way. I like to make a folder 
And I'm going to show you guys how I deal with coloring um, while having multiple layers as your line work. Because I don't like lining everything on one layer. I find it a little bit tedious in terms of coloring and making lines look softer. But um, another thing is that I need to find something to ink with. And it gives me kind of an excuse, like, excuse to try out the smoothing. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this. Um, yeah, I don't really like how this looks. So we'll put enough on there. Um, but not too much so that I can get it still natural feeling. So let's go into... Did I just press cancel? Okay. Um, in terms of size... I don't know if we should go thinner, maybe? Three might be good. Let's just start. I'm gonna start with the eyes, like I usually do. So like I said, I usually like doing line art on... Like if I plan to do line art for an illustration, for whatever reason, um, I usually like to do it in Paint Tool Sci. For me, it's quicker than doing it on the iPad. And I think Streamline, not Streamline, Stabilization or Smoothing on Paint Tool Sci is like one of the more superior ones out there. Oh, I usually fill, what am I doing? I usually fill these in. I'm gonna flip this. So we can make sure that these look somewhat accurate. Is this... I don't know. Can you guys see that? I can see brown in here, which means I feel like it's not at full opacity. It's okay. It's not the worst. Um, but when I'm doing line work and I need to adjust something and I have things colored on separate layers, plus the line art on separate layers, it kind of gets really tedious needing to fix one thing. And then I have to go back into the line art layer, then go back to the base color, then go to the shading colors and any effect layers, like effect layers that I need to fix. But if I do everything into like one or two layers in the end, then it's easier for me to correct. And some things I don't even know like if I like them being outlined, so having the choice to change that almost at, like at will is really nice. I'm actually going to open up, um, not the drawing guide reference, keep this up here so we can see. It's easier to see them when they have like planes, so I can make like this darker and it looks like it's receding. Oh, she has gloves, man. Like I don't even have to draw this part. I'm just gonna add this as one larger shape. So it's kind of all the same. Bit of a larger one. So we can have these ones kind of crisscross. So she has this thing that kind of ties around her wrist. Just before I get like questions about this, because I feel like I will. Um, if you zoom super closely, you can see like the little bit of like pixels. Like this, more predominantly, but because of how my camera is picking it up, you guys can't really see it that much. And I don't think it affects the overall look of it too much when you zoom out. But I know some people might be using the same brush and they're going to be questioning why maybe it doesn't look the same. It's just my camera isn't picking it up. Most likely it is the same. <laughs> also a tip for hair is try to make things not start and stop at the same place. So it looks more natural. And I just feel like if you add more line weight, it's just a little bit more fun to <laughs> fill in the color. I'm having only a little bit of an easier time lining up the lines in Procreate compared to 
um, an ibis paint. So it definitely feels like I just have difficulty lining on the iPad. Had a feeling I was on the wrong layer. Oh my god, I almost lost my voice. <laughs> Show these shapes somewhat correctly. I'm gonna have to finish these in the morning now that I'm thinking about it. We'll see. We'll see how gung ho I am about to finish this. It's only 12 a.m., I think. Should be okay. So I'm gonna do the ball first. Luckily, Procreate will correct my. Inability to draw a circle. It's an oval. It's an oval still. Oh well. I feel like recently when I've done line work, um, I've been putting more detail. Okay. Yeah, so on the iPad it feels like a lot more back and forth. On Pito side I can just easily hold control, I think. If not, it's shift. And click on whatever line it is. Or object, and it'll take me directly to that layer, so it's a lot easier. How much am I gonna have to cut out of me just taking forever doing line work? Careful what I erase. And then the guy I'm listening to kinda has similar feeling in his voice to Soraru. Which I really like. His voice is so peaceful. There's like one song, I don't remember what it's called. It's after the rain, right? With Mafu Mafu. I had one of their CDs. I think. I don't have Soraru's CD. I have Amat like Amatsuki CDs. And I got one from Japan too. But um there was one song I would constantly listen to because I couldn't sleep when I was in Japan. I don't know if it's because probably it was because I was jet lagged. Is it too low? Looks kinda stupid. I think we can move on. I think this is this is okay. This is this is yeah, this is okay. I'm gonna put back the opacity on this. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I usually like to do. Um, I think minus the eyes. Minus the eyes and minus the eyebrows, I think, is what I like to do. Um, so I'm going to... Go into group. So one thing I like to do is use the reference tool. I think in clip it's the beacon. In... I think in paint tool side it's the selection like something like that selection tool I don't know what it's called it's like selection layer it makes the layer look like a kind of like a bluish green color I'll put a screenshot if I remember but it's a way for your tools to know uh, where to stay in the lines and stuff or if you're like dropping colors or using the bucket tool and stuff but Procreate doesn't have it for groups um, but I know in Clip Studio Paint, I think Ibis Paint does this too, which is why I said that this works with Ibis Paint as well as in Paint Tool Sci. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna flatten this. So now that I flattened it, I am going to select everything. I'm going to go here and copy, and then I'm going to undo until it, I undo the flattened group. Now I'm going to go in paste. So I should be able to paste exactly the same thing. So now that I have everything in one layer, I'm going to set this one to the reference. And then I'm going to keep this one on. And I'm going to keep it above for now. Um, now hopefully I don't have to change any of the line art for now. Otherwise I'm going to have to repeat the steps. So now that we have set this to reference, we'll see. I'll show you guys what I mean. Okay, now that I've deleted the layer, I'm gonna drag the purple into her face, and you can see it's gonna go everywhere. Your bucket doesn't know where to go, so in order to tell it where to go, I'm gonna bring back that other layer. 
this one. I'm gonna set this one to reference. And then now that's set to reference, I'm going to go to this layer. So I'm going to be able to color on individual layers without having to go back to this to select. So that I can just easily, you know, drag and drop wherever I need it to be. So I find this much more easier. I'm going to try to keep my like all my colors in the same folder just to make things easier. Process when digitally painting because I like to avoid all this craziness. I gotta make sure this is not referenced for now. Until we're done with the background. Or did I want to make it look like she's sitting on the sidewalk? <laughs> it's a little weird. I can probably get rid of that. Make it look like she's kind of like, sitting on the sidewalk. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna make this lighter. A little bit more saturated, and then I'm going to lock it. And more color variation to the shadow. Unlock it, and I'm gonna blur it. Going back to this layer, we're going to color the skin first. Now, I usually don't drag and drop the skin that often. I usually color it manually. <laughs> and as we get more and more... Oh, I didn't do her choker. Color all this in. I didn't draw the rest of her arm. So what I'm gonna do is quickly throw that in, and then I need to- I forgot, I need to duplicate the... The line art. Okay, so... I duplicate- I forgot I could do this. You duplicate- I don't know why I did it the dumb, the dumb way. I forgot Procreate has this option. So I'm gonna duplicate the whole group, and then just flatten this. And then we have it. Set it to reference. We're good to go. So I think for the most part, we're just gonna color... So I'm gonna lock this. Color everything softly, and then I'll do things how I usually do it when I'm coloring with many layers. Actually, I might paint it a little bit. There's your cheeks. I don't really remember how I approached the venti one. I'm assuming I approached this one in the same way. Or did I paint it in the same way that I usually do? Um, like my line art stuff. So I feel like when I'm coloring line work, I use the airbrush a little bit too much. <clears throat> So I'm going to use more of my painterly style to paint. Because I feel like when I was painting and- or not painting, drawing an ibis paint, I did it very similar to how I usually do things in paint tool sci if I were to do line work. So I'm going to try my best to blend these out. But I also don't like things super smooth in terms of making things look like they're airbrushed, like I said. <laughs> So that was a habit I had before. So this is gonna be like, it feels a little tedious. <laughs> and also people are gonna prefer like the, I feel like the, how clean this probably looks. <laughs> we can darken this up a little bit. Okay, so she does have a little bit of makeup or like an orangey red eyeshadow. What is it called? Her tattoo. And then she has like little, little itty bitty ones here. So we're gonna make a new layer. 
choose a whitish color. I'm gonna make this one the brighter one. And then this one will be more of an off-white since it's in the shadow. Um, instead of the reference layer, I'm gonna go into this eye layer. And we're basically going to Studio Pen. So her eyes are like a yellowy orange color. So I'm going to I color eyes in a really weird way, I think. I'm gonna have to change the or add an effect or something over these after. Otherwise it won't really match the the whites. No, I don't know why I do it like this. This is how I do it. Like an alternative is you could just do the outlines, but for some reason I think it's easier for me to get the eyes looking a little bit more even. Um when I do it this way. <laughs> so alpha lock, we're gonna change this one probably to a a brown. Make it a little bit darker near the center. Alright. So now that I have a gradient going, I need to add pupil. Or not a pupil. I'm gonna add kind of like the highlights. And I always do it like this. Probably won't show you the entire process. Otherwise, this is going to be like a really long video. I'm going to kind of mimic their eyes a little bit. I don't know. A little bit darker and add the extra pupil in the center. Only to a certain extent because after lighting it too much, it'll look kind of out of place. So this isn't gonna work for all the skin, so I'm just gonna apply it everywhere first and then we'll pick some places to darken and or lighten. And then we can make some of these even a little bit lighter so that they don't stand out too much. Mm, here, okay. I'm just gonna drag and drop. Uh... Getting these little corners and stuff is always annoying. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna finish the rest of this tomorrow, so I'll be back for day three, I guess. I don't really remember where we left off. Let's just continue to fill in these objects. Okay, and then we're gonna color the hair. So, what I'm gonna do is for this one, I'm going to first, I think I'm just gonna lock it. And then we're gonna add some basic shadows. Kinda change the value of her hair a little bit before I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add a multiply layer, most likely. Actually, maybe we won't add a multiplier. If we add all the colors that we want to use for this. But if we put the kind of like hair shines in, we make it a lot easier to just paint in the objects. So usually I would add multiplier layers to do the shadows over top of these like gradients. But I think this might be easier for me. Gonna flush out the hair so that we can make these forms make sense. I'm gonna stick with mostly like purples and stuff so I know that it's more like shadows rather than shifting the hue. So we'll soften these up with the line art and I'm gonna add one more layer of um, the skin tone over top. Let that bleed through. And then I will lower the opacity so it's not as strong. Usually around to 50%. And then we'll go into the 
hair layer. And then change the colors appropriately. I think it looks really cute. We can keep softening kind of these inside lines to be a little bit more soft so they're less prominent. Yeah, but now the hair looks quite soft. And then we can work on the rest of the object. So I'm just going to quickly probably fill in the clothes. So what I'm going to do is just slowly fill in everything slowly and then um, any missing parts we can just go through and just color manually with a brush. Make these white. I'm going to do the fish on a different layer. And then you want like that. So you can see that there's like little gaps. Not sure what does that or why the threshold is so low, I guess. I gotta wait. And I think that's pretty much all for the detailing other than a little bit back here put that in i think we're good in terms of patterning and everything so now the tedious part is adding shadows so i'm gonna set it to multiply and then pick an appropriate shadow color also need to clip this So what I like to do is just generally put down some shadows and then we can kind of clean it up a little bit. But I just need like a general gist of what things might need to look like. Kind of give a little bit more of a 3D or like a little bit of thickness on the fabric. I'm also going to give a little bit of reflective, reflective light down there. I think that's pretty much a good majority of what these might have to look like. Vibrant with their shadows, make the shadows look a little bit more purple. See how it looks a lot better if it's a little bit more warm here. Some of these um, objects benefit from like a warmer, a little bit more saturated color than the really cold, muted ones. So I love adding this kind of like muscle, like miscellaneous color, make things look a little bit more vibrant, but less dull. But for me, I want to probably clean it up more. So um, we're gonna merge these downwards. And carefully switch brushes and kind of clean up, fix some stuff up. I mentioned this in previous videos, but I love coloring um, red objects with purple. You can really like push the values of it. A little bit softer. I'm probably not going to touch this that much because of the patterning. There is like a texture. It's just my camera can't pick it up, but yeah. Is that it? Maybe? Other than the bracelet, probably. Okay, 
Let's do the little fishy things. Let me look up the reference so we know what colors we're using. This one's more of a yellow. Let's look for the yellow one. We'll give us the orange one. <laughs> Trying to make this look shiny, but I need to add shadows to it first. A little bit of like a texture for the fin. So we go back into this layer, relock it, and then we can change the line art colors to be more appropriately fitting for some of these parts. A lot of the times, if you really want it to look super soft, you would just pick the color that you colored with, like for the object, and then go over it. So make it a little bit softer, but also I don't want it to be too light. So like I said, that if there's colors that are kind of like overlapping another area, not colors, line work, then I'll just take the same line color that it's overlapping and just clean it up a little bit. Making this look a little bit more atmospheric. Adding a little bit of that, I'm going to add a multiply layer over the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna add some pink. I don't know if I should add pink. I definitely don't like how sterile it looks, so... But I also think it could benefit from just using... Just lighter... Colors that might just float in. Then I'll add some... I think I'll add some petals. I don't know. I still don't like how sterile the background looks. I should have planned a better background prior. But now that I based a lot of the colors on the background, I don't really want to shift it that much. I might change the whole color temperature in the back. Or just add an overlay entirely on the back side and maybe just try to warm it up i think because maybe i'm just drawn to warmer compositions hey i think i think this is it i think this is how we're gonna leave yoimiya as so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video where i finally do line art in procreate and kind of show you guys the process as well as kind of randomizing whose specialty dish I was going to draw today. I know it doesn't look exactly like how they have it. Um, one, because the shape's probably a little bit off, but also I think I drew them way too big. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys the quick run through, the time lapse. And then I'll add the time lapse where I'm not speeding it up as much like this, like the consistent one at the very end. But yeah. I actually quite liked my sketch more than when I line arted everything. I still think it looks really cute and I had a lot of fun kind of mixing and matching both my painterly style with the line arting style that I usually do. I definitely like the freedom of having um, the ability just to paint over things and change things at will versus like having to change the line art and kind of like bucketing everything in yeah i think a lot of these needed like color adjustment and stuff i think i'm gonna add one more thing actually now that i think about it see i don't know if i like this it's a little too bright in my opinion i think it's because i want that other sparkle to pop through Yeah, I think it looks really cute. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do is that I'm going to add another overlay there. Super light. And then I will go and use the noise filter. So this one doesn't show up as much, um, also because I have the layer so light. So let's bring up the layer a bit. Yeah, I, th I, I really like
like adding the noise layer to some of these kind of more um, busier pieces. I don't know. I just like the texture of it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!